The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman on the 17th day, to, uh, Monday the uh, 17th of April, we're looking at the Dow up 18 at 32,905, as I was saying earlier in the update, uh, this is Boston Marathon Day, uh, wow, I remember way back when I was staying at the corner of Hereford and uh, Newbury, no, Boylston Street, Hereford and Boylston Street, way back, and there were like a couple of people running by me. It was a, it was a holiday, and I had the day off, and I remember asking this policeman, I said, well, what's going on? Well, what, what's this? It's, oh, this is the Boston Marathon, and there must have been like uh, three people going by, then two people, then a big gap, and people just walking around. And now, of course, you have tens of thousands. All right, so here we go. We're looking at uh, the Dow up 28,3915. Beginning of the week, so this is really important. I think it's going to be a very important week because what I had said Thursday and Friday was that the technicals in the Dow daily chart are extremely, not so much the weekly chart, but the technicals in the daily were extremely strong. And that to, it, it could take time, and I, I showed you the uh, e-mini chart I think it was the 10 minute or the one minute chart, and I showed it to you how that curve in the stochastic uh, and the MACD, how you needed to see it immediately come down on really bad news to cross negative for the nine period over the 14 to go pink and change from green to pink and be negative. You'd have a, have a huge price move, so it has to be either really bad news that comes suddenly, or it's a methodical slow move down that takes about three, like distribution at the top. So it takes a few days, and I can even consider that in the last three days, even though we had a fabulous Thursday, that the last three days have been some kind of a consolidation phase. But look, the nine is still the price is way above the nine period moving average. The price is at thirty-three thousand nine ten. The nine is at uh, thirty-three thousand. Uh, six, uh, 651, which is also this midpoint uh, gray line, the horizontal gray line that I said is key support. I had said it back in February, and then we broke down below it, had that sharp move into the March low. Then we went back, and we've gone back above it. The green, 9 p moving average is way over the 14, which is at 33,458. So to get this green line to really sink, You'd have to see a price way down here at the 50 period moving average. You'd have to see the Dow at 33,200. Or it's going to take a little time as it wears away. Uh, meantime, the MACD is still strong. The histogram is starting to slide a little bit. The uh, stochastic still flat at 93%. You can't ask for anything more than that. That's fab. Well, you can ask for something more. But that's really good. Flat in the stochastic at 93% is really good action. It doesn't say that it can go skyrocketing. It just says you've got tremendous support. And you should be making higher highs. And then the, the unbalanced volume, the little blue line there, is has made that double top with a weaker right shoulder than the left. So it is pulling back. You can see there's a little bit of stalling motion in the Dow. And the relative strength right here is steady. It's looking quite good. I, I'm, I'm approximating it at about 68%. Quite good. Weekly chart, we've just begun the week. We need to see a break above. This uh, trend line resistance here gets you the 34. Oh, I'd say, oh, it would be fantastic if we can get you 34,300s this week. You don't have to close it, you just have to touch it. That'll be a really good action. Let's go to the SP. I'm doing this because it's the beginning of the week. We need to, uh, at least I need to know what I'm looking at. I'm looking at stalling formation here down 66 cents and the SP at 4137. So that the high that was at 4150, or was it 50? Let me just check. The high that was. Uh, 41.63.19. I may as well just type that in. 41.63.19. On Friday, a close above it. You can break above it today, and that'll be a continuation of leg E. A close below it says you made a peak E. A push in the next couple of days to the 41.72, 41.82 level would be really good. But in the meantime, I'm just saying, I'm anticipating, I said to subscribers, you're not going to put on anything new unless it's a particular stock they've been wanting for a little while, which we do have one, 
And we're waiting for a little bit of a pullback to get it. It's had a really strong leg B. I'd like to pull back and then to get it at least to try for leg C and D. We'll see about that. Meantime, back at the ranch, the QQQ is down 87 cents at 317.75. You can see what's happened here. We've got a cup formation. This goes to right shoulder failure pattern. That's like a um, dreaded H where you go up and then you fail at a peak A or B underneath the previous high, and you take out the left side low. We haven't done that yet. It's still holding well. The technicals are still pretty good in the 9 over the 14, but the other technicals are starting to fail, and the weekly chart is still holding well, but I think this is a little bit vulnerable. IWM also is a small caps. It's up, uh, oh, now it's up $1.15 at 177.65, so it's held the gains while the others have been slow. To, uh, to to rally and hold rallies. They just haven't been able to do that. But isn't it interesting because the iShares often, it does that as the others are faltering and then they all come down together. Talk about all come down together. Gold is down uh, nine points at 2006. I believe this is going to turn into a peak G slash C, uh, making it a G if gold slides under 1988 in the next day or two. Um, then I think we've made some kind of a short-term top. Leg E will go to a peak E in the weekly chart. Why do I say that? Well, if you look at silver, silver is pulling back a little bit, but it's had a fabulous move up. It's bumping up against the Chapman Wave inside wedge target repellent line. It's made the bar symmetry perfectly here in the cup formation. I, I At 26, 28, down 17 ticks. If, go, if silver at any point touches 24.52, um, this week, there's a really good chance that the weekly chart itself is going to stall a little bit. But it's had a fabulous move. It deserves a little bit of a breather. High-grade copper. High-grade copper is pulling back. Peak B, and now it's coming back into the Chapman Wave inside track. What was a repellent zone that became a propellant zone, and now it's back to a repellent zone. And that weekly chart is just kind of stalling sideways. I'll just do this because I had questions over the weekend. Yes, FCX, that is a leg D. Good, good eye. Um, and it, it failed to make the left side, right side price time match by a couple of days and, and a couple of points. It's at 42.08. I think it's having a little rest of period. If you look at SCCO, which is the Southern Copper, Copper Company went right into the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. Could have one more peak to a leg D. But this is the area where it keeps getting repelled. And look, it's got that wedge formation in the... Um, Weekly chart, we'll get maybe by Wednesday, we'll talk about that rich formation. I don't want to talk about it now. Let's go to, uh, I wanted to go to the dollar. The dollar is up, and we spoke about this the other day. I had a call on, on uh, Thursday, I spoke about it, and Friday we had a call. I spent quite a bit of time on this, and I said, in my bar symmetry work, it looks like a pyramid. It goes straight up, and then you come back down. Uh, peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D fails at 105.88 on the 8th of March, comes back down, tests the 100. 100.82 low of the 3rd of February. In beautiful price time match, it's actually three days late, but that's not a problem because it, it, it got there. The MACD is trying its best to turn back up again. The histogram is improving a bit. The stochastic still quite weak, but it's higher than it was in that trough D, and this is a trough E. So uh, un unless, well, if the dollar at 101.58 up 57 ticks is able to break and hold 102.58, Somewhere around 102.28 breaks down trend line, and that'll be a big positive. Uh, I'll be back in a moment because we want to look at natural gas, high grade crop, and the others. Tells the chapter type business hour, tells the business piece up one click. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open. 
to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today. And try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, I just wanted to show you this. I got the screen here and so many of these bio, microbiotechs have been popping up lately. Look at this. Uh, Sana Biotech Inc. Repair and Control Genes in Cells or Replace Them uh, up 40 cents is five dollars and 59 cents up 7.8 percent but look at this uh it's gone to peak a b this is a leg c right above the 200 period moving average and just four sessions ago it was at 360 now it's at 560. now yes yeah, these are big moves anyway i just thought i showed that uh, one i'm doing this uh, BA, bbai uh, question about it was that bba yes Oh, it was a B, yeah, BBAI, leg D, did this left side, right side price tie match, doing it beautifully. The target that I mentioned on Thursday or Friday was this high that was $3.79. Today's high is $3.70, bumping up against the Chapman Wave inside wedge target re repellent line. Let's see what happens there. Uh, the, oh, this is Big Bear.ai holdings. Is that? I can't remember now. Is that going to do with anything with... Uh, Biotech? I'm not sure. Uh, oh, well, anyway. So a question came up about natural gas. Natural gas up very nicely today, up up 17 cents at 2.28, up $8.8%. .8%. Well, that is what I was hoping to see. I, for about three days, I want you to have subscribers by the UNG. But, you know, there's a big problem with this. There, there's been an issue with natural gas the way that it made the bottom now, this bottom, I think, is a little bit better than the one before. But that one before did a 30% gain. It went from 714 back in February at the low to uh, almost $10 uh, just about a week and a half later. Is this going to be different? Well, in that instance, the MACD and Stochastic were doing very well. <clears throat> and then it failed. And a peak A and a gap down and just made low lows and lower highs ever since. Today, with a low on Friday of $6.27, with a decent close in the UNG, that's the United States Natural Gas Fund, this is the first time I can say that the the way that it's taken off is so much better than those candles that we were looking at, the kind of uh, reluctant move to the upside. This is a move that says the day is young, but if trading at 7, uh, 714 open, hits 1719, 719, the low is 711 and now it's at 713. If there's an if it, even if it stalls now, 
if it doesn't go under 690 on a closing basis, but holds somewhere above 705, let's say, and intraday it gets to 732, 728, anything like that, and then gaps up tomorrow, that's the move that says, hey, now we can have a decent rally to test the tens, and this time 10 should not be a barrier, it should go right through, and speed should be the issue. But it is still, there's, there's been something wrong with the contract and something wrong, and that's the reason why I'm saying if you are doing anything with this, just put, you must put in a stop, you can always get back in, but if this thing tanks, it tanks very sharply and and doesn't go back. Sometimes it goes back the very next day, but most of the time it's made lower lows afterwards. So I'm just saying, for those of you who asked me about it, yes, <clears throat> um, I had considered on Friday, but even Friday went to a lower low. I probably would have been stopped out. I don't look. It opened on Friday at six. Uh, it opens at six thirty-four. Uh, makes a low of 627. Maybe I wouldn't have been stopped. Anyway, I, I didn't do it. So in this particular instance, the day is very young because this has been a, just a, a hazard to your wealth and your health. But in this particular instance, another a second gap up, meaning that within seven trading days, that means that from today going all the way into, I'd even say I need to go into Tuesday or Wednesday of next week. If it hasn't taken out the high that was made on Friday, which was 719, hasn't seven, sorry, 674. If it hasn't closed under 674, but instead has actually spiraled towards eight, that's what you want to see. So yes, um, is it a tradable? I think right now it's tradable, but watch it, put your stops in. You have, to, and I don't know if you if you have a, a, a platform that allows it to trade overnight. That's one thing. Otherwise. I don't know what you do. If you've got a really good gain, you can have it, hold it overnight and just try to put a stop in. But if you, if you can't trade it overnight, and this is really a tough thing. So then another question came up about NAT, which is um, Nordic American tanker shipping. Now, some of the shippers have done very well lately and some of them are really plunged. They, they were doing well and then they just took it on the chin. Well, uh, Nordic American tanker. I mean, I'm not going through the story again. I don't even remember his name, but the the um, the CEO way back. I think it's like almost 15 years ago. I don't know what it was. It was a long time ago. And the last time that Nordic tankers started to tank, uh, and I may as well just do this right now. It's Monday. We got time. It was way over there. Uh, was it even before? No, I think it was. Oh yeah, it was somewhere around. It might have been the, the, the going to the highs of 2005. I got a feeling it, it was after that. It was on the way down. I know. I remember it was on the way down. I think it was right somewhere around. It might even have been right in this move to the upside. Uh, peak A, peak B, peak C, D. Okay, or C1, C2. And then it came down from the uh, 15... 17.45 area, and then most, even the recent lows, look at this, it went, oh man, this is horrible. It went down to $1.42. I remember at some point, uh, the CEO said, oh, oh, I think it was being interviewed by Jim Cramer, and he said, oh yeah, I, uh, we, we're, we've never skipped a dividend in 45 years, I don't know what it is, 45 quarters, whatever it was, I haven't skipped, we've added, we've increased the dividend, and we're buying tankers, we're doing it, and I remember saying to myself, wow, I've got signals here that suggest that natural gas is not, I, I mean, sorry, a, a, a Nordic American tanker from just the chart formation in the monthly chart, it should be making lower lows and lower, lower highs, which it did. And then it had a big spike to nine and then it plunged back in 2020. So all I can say is this is the first time with oil holding as well as it's held that uh, Nordic American tanker shipping, I believe that they have mostly oil. I, I'm almost sure that it's oil. I think that this is the first time in a while that the rallies have been sustained. Now I think we're looking at it, and I've, I've got a kind of a stalling formation that I'm looking at here. It's in leg C at 370. I, if you want this as an intermediate term buy, you're prepared to sit tight no matter whether it drops 30% or not because you can see it going to 420 or 440. That's one thing. I'm just thinking right now that DSX, another shipper, 
Yeah, that's acting a little. The charge a little bit better. What was the other one? Uh, oh, oh, TK wasn't that TK shipping? Yeah, they do different things at TK. That's a much better chart. Yeah, I I just don't like the chart of of Nordic American tanker shipping. So all I would say is as even now as a tentative buy at 370, I don't there's, I don't see any problem with that. Because it's making higher highs and higher lows in the daily. The weekly chart says it could have a problem in the 380 to this big candle right here. I don't know what the reason was. That was four on the 3rd of uh, April with a high of 389 and a low of 342. If this, thing, if this thing can actually trade in the four, 410 area anytime in the next two weeks, that's really good action. But it does seem to me to have support in the 340 to 330 area. So yes, I, if you want, if you start a position, I'd say that's fine. It's a very quick A, B, and now it's leg C, but it needs to be If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. NN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Uh, yes, that's, I forgot all about that. I used to follow this. I lost the notations, but it's easy enough just to get them back. Uh, Scorpio uh, Tankers. And that is uh, <clears throat> trading at 58.29, up $1.53. Now, this one... You see, this is made higher highs. It looks a little bit similar to uh, Nordic Tanker and Thanks uh, um, A22, um, uh, Dan the Den. Um, uh, uh, Nordic Tankers has been raising dividend two times last quarter and reduced debt and refreshed fleet with three new Suzmax. Uh, solid financials long, long from $2 here. My interest is very long term. Yeah, that's completely different. In that, in that particular situation, I like it and I do... 
I, I love the sincerity of the CEO, except it was totally long. And and the, the, when I, you're talking about tankers, this tanked terribly, and he's kept on saying. And then he got stopped. He, he was he was not interviewed after a while, but he had another quarter where he was talking about it, and he kept repeating the same thing. I think there is a difference, and I do believe I heard him interviewed at some point. I can't remember his name, um, but uh, I, I like what he was saying. But I, as I say before, uh, he's he was just totally wrong. But I think that they are doing the right thing now. And I, I have to tell you, over the weekend, as I I like to filter things through. You know, I have this this very long term uh, look at the market. Uh, I always base it on the 1929s, 1930s. The similarities are just unbelievable. Uh, the fact that people have got so much money now in CDs, that money is going to be put to use and invariably it goes somewhere into the stock market or something related to the stock market. Um, I, I just don't know how to square this all together with the, with the, the emails and texts and stuff that uh, or, or in, uh, on YouTube, the, the, the crash and smash and the end of the world. I, I can see it coming, but not yet. I still think there's a coda phase to come, and the coda phase is going to be wild, and it's going to involve the computers. It's going to involve people in their houses, in their little rooms, just trading and trading like it was a game. And when everything blows up, it'll be devastating because you won't know who was doing what until you see all the for sale signs out there. I mean, I hate to be doom and gloom on a day like this because I'm actually quite positive with the market. We're still long. Took another little bit of profits the other day, uh, looking for a nice pullback to start another whole series of buys. Uh, uh, you know, just perfect time to have your portfolio. We, I spoke on, on in my overview on Friday. We went through the portfolios. Uh, let me just see what's going on here. Uh, one, one second, please. Uh, let's see. Thanks, but Yeah. Oh, okay. So question came in. Yes, I'm going to do a bunch of things with questions, but I also want to go through in sequence with what people ask me. So let me just see. <clears throat> so I did the I did the uh, um, the copper ones. Look at this, Mar. This is M A R. Typed it in the wrong place. M A R is Marriott. Why is Marriott doing so well? I, actually, just go to this. Any of the sports? Why are the Celtics games sold out? Why are do you know the price? You know what people are paying for tickets? This is not the depression type action that you would be expecting. This is there. My people have money, and especially once they pull money out of the market and they have it kind of sitting there, some of that money kind of gets used. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, I just don't see. I, I do see. I keep saying, be ready for 2,500 points, 3,000 points down, down move at some point. Just do this real quickly, uh, just to show you once again, to remind you, we've had the, uh, if I can get this, let me see if I can do that. Yep, I can. We've had um, Dow, let me go to the Dow, I-N-D-U. We've had the Dow with the internal low and the residual low. I think we're getting back up into the area where we could start to see internal high and a residual high and then a pullback. But this low here, took in so many factors. This is the low of October. We're still long from that low. That that took so many factors, economic, uh, social, geopolitical, uh, just everything, that I'm thinking this whole area here of 3,100, sorry, 31,000 in the Dow, that, I don't know if it will be. I'm just saying my eye says that that could be a worst-case basis over the next co couple of months if there is another big sell-off. But in the meantime, that low from October is held, and we've every time we have bad news, we've been rallying into the bad news so that we've got the cushion. All right, enough of that. So this is Marriott. Why is the Marriott holding the Chapman Wave Inside Track uh, propellant zone so well? Look at that. Look, you're just right on it, and then it starts to rally. Well, if it starts to take it out, I'll get serious about saying, oh, maybe now we're going to have some really bad uh, uh, market action related to the bad news. And if we start to see the Marriott trading at 169 right now, start to uh, trade on a weekly basis in the 145 or 140 area, I'll say, oh, okay, something else is going on. So I, do, I need to do that. So another question came in, E-N-P-H, uh, E-N-P-H, -E this is uh, E-N-P-H. 
This is N phase. Nice move up 17. Wow. It's up $17 today, 226, up 8%. 8 what a nice gap up after the doji candle I spoke. I think I mentioned it on Friday. I said, it's just kind of stuck now. It needs to start leg C. Wow, is it start leg C in the daily? That's a leg B in the weekly. A nice takeoff, but until Enphase really starts to trade in the 250s, it, this has to be treated first as a balance, a decent balance, and then we can talk about it in the weekly chart is going from a buy signal. Hasn't done that yet. I have to wait for the entire week to close. But the, definitely the daily is in a buy mode, saying it should go to a D. 233 is the 200 period moving average. Next question came in. Oh, I missed it. Let me go back again. Uh, Tiger chat. Uh, folks, if just join the Tigers then There is so much information there. Um, speaking of people. So I did that, I did that, I did that, I did that. Uh, a, uh, N phase, I've done that, ENPH. Oh, I didn't tell you the support. Support for N phase is in that doji candle. So it's in the, uh, I'd say between 210 and 206 should be very strong support if there's a sudden pullback in the next day or two. Uh, that was there, I did that, did that, did that. Uh, let me look at the Tigers YouTube, no, nothing there yet. Um, okay, here we go. Uh, next question was, I haven't finished looking at the, the market. So let's go. So I, I did gold. I did silver. I did I did the dollar. But look, the USD JPY, that's the, look, here we go. This is the yen, US dollar Japanese yen currency pair. Nice leg E pushing away from the 200 period moving average. Remember I spoke about that Friday. I said it's hugging that line. It needs to get the further away. If it can get to the 135 or 28, I think I said, it's at 134.39 right now. That area that says it's starting to push away nicely from the 200 period moving average. It makes that at least the uh, 133.70, 200 period moving average, good support, the higher it can go. Although if it fails, yeah, you can look at it under that as support. But wait a minute, EURUSD, this is unusual, leg C. It looks, everything about it looks like it should be a D, but I, I have no choice. It is a C in the daily. It's a F slash B in the weekly and a B in the monthly. So the euro is actually pulling back a bit. Let's see where gold is right now. Gold is GC. Oh, GDX was the next question. Yeah, gold is now down 12. I think gold is now going to have that pullback. So will the market pull back together with gold coming down and the dollar going high? It's, we've seen it before, and I suspect that what I'm looking at here is just it, it's exactly that, that we are looking at a period here that says, hoo, 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 uh, be careful because the dollar often has shown some weakness in the general. It corresponds often some week so GDX made the PP pulling back gold miners at 34.24 down 85 Basil Chapman does a 4 SP down 3 I'll be right back Talk. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. 
Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today. And try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I know Dow's down uh, five, SP's down five. Um, this, I think, I, I'm going to get this week as being a. Uh, <laughs> A choppy week with there's a chance that we we start to roll over here because we've got those D's and E's in the Chapman Wave methodology in the daily charts. We're looking at them very closely. So a question came up here about Myrna. Uh, Myrna is Moderna. I just made a peak F under the 200 period moving average. It couldn't hit it. So this F says it could last a little bit longer at 145.60 down 11, down seven. I don't know what the story is, but I longer term. I know that. Uh, um, uh, you look to this as a a potential a longer term position. If it's a longer term position, I suspect that Moderna, Biotech, COVID, many other trials, etc., going on. I think that it's just from the the evidence that I've gleaned from what people have said and what I've read. This is a very serious uh, biotech company. I don't know whether they've done something that that it, it looks like the COVID rally to 497 to August of 2021. It looks like that's completely done. Now they have to restart the company to be, make it fashionable again in the biotech area. So I wouldn't be surprised if it retests the 135 area, 134, 135 that was made back in the beginning of March. And then I wouldn't even be surprised if it goes a little bit lower. But looking at it as, as a monthly chart that's trying to build support with the MACD attempting the histogram starting to improve. I would say that sometime in uh, this year, I wouldn't be surprised if it rallies towards the 190 to 210 area and then takes another breather. That's the characteristic of the stock. That used to be the characteristic until it became the, one of the, you know, the stock uh, of the 2020 uh, 20 and 2021 period. So at this particular point, be prepared that it can pull back. Now, if you're looking to add to the position, and I think you do have the position, um, I, I would hold off. Hold off adding. So talking about adding, holding off, let, just give it a little bit. I want to see where this pullback stops. If it doesn't stop at 140, it's at 145. I think it will test the low. If it stops, it can go sideways for a little while. This is kind of what it does very often. Amazon, uh, the, uh, there's no relation other than uh, people ask, keep asking me about Amazon. Where would you get it? And I've said, for Amazon right now, I think it's worth holding off. It's done very nicely since uh, the, the lows. It's screamed up from the from the 80s up into the 100. The last one went to 105. Before that, it went to the 113, I think, area. Um, so it's in a, in a position that it's trying to form some kind of a base. I think it needs more time. The whole area of the retail area, it, it needs more time. Uh, SWN. I, that's a uh, southwestern energy, natural gas. I, I think that I think it's it's like a uh, it's like a uh, an energy play that 
saw the, the down lower lows and lower highs based on natural gases move, but it's actually a little bit, in, probably a little bit independent. So if natural gas actually rallies, maybe it'll, it'll help profits. And in this particular instance, 5.11 was the high on the 11th of, um, 11th of April, and today's high, when I said what? 5. 30, 531, I think I said, yes, 531. And today's high is 531, so you've got maybe a peak C1, C2. But look, the stochastic's at 80%. That's good. The MACD's good. The 9 over the 14. So we could chop around a bit, little bit if at any point in the next, I don't want to give it too long. I'm going to give it until the end of April. If at any point in the end of, between now and the end of April, it hits, that's like two weeks or so, whatever it is. I just need to check. What is today? 17th of one week. Oh, one week, two weeks, yes, two weeks and a day. If if it can go, if it can trade at 5.48 to 5.52, then that high that was made back on the uh, 3rd of March of 5.72 becomes very important as a magnet. But you look, it hasn't closed above the nine period, the 14 period, the black 14 period moving average, which is above the pink, which is still very negative. Even on that deflection higher, just one week, uh, it had a green candle, but it did close. Oh, let's just go from the week of the 2nd of December. It's just made lower lows and lower highs. Now you can see the MACD in the week is improving. Yes, I think that you're right. This is, in your instance, since you have patience, uh, this is the kind of stock that I would say to you, start your position right here at 525. Um, I would add on strength under certain circumstances, and let's talk it. Just give me a yell, and we'll look at it again. But on any pullback, if it closes under 511, it's in a stalling formation yet again, and that's really what you have to look at. But in your case, if you haven't got any, this is where you could just start a small position. Next question came in as uh, uh, yeah. So John, uh, uh, you like Sting? That's a Scorpio. I've had this, I remember a long time ago when I had this, it was acting better than some of the others, Scorpio tankers. Look at that monthly chart. That is very strong. It's trading at 58.66. If I had to draw a pattern, I'd say here's a rectangle formation. It's like a little flag, but it has a chance of making a cup formation, and that's really most important. Nice day to up $1.90. So if this continues, if natural gas is on its way up, and so far I love everything I'm looking at, um, if natural gas is on its way up, then there's a trend line right here that I'd be looking at, how it handles it. This is where I should put it. I'm going to be a little conservative. I'm going to go to the body of that second candle right there. The top of the one that I'm looking at is the 17th of February at 64.20. And then the one that I'm looking at is the long-legged doji. It didn't take out the high on the 8th of um, 8th of March. It had a high of 63.22. The next day, the high was 63.20. And so I'm taking the body of that candle so that we can get close. And we're there. So that says to me, if this can close... Peak A, peak B, leg C. I prefer leg C's to be very strong. It's almost like the third wave of an Elliott wave, but I'm not doing Elliott wave here. I'm just doing Chapman wave. This is a cup formation. If this can close above in leg C, if it can close above 60.33, I'd say that's the action that you're looking at. And yes, I, I do like it. Next question came in. Uh, did I get the question here? Uh, another question for me. Okay, just scrolling down. Okay, so uh, this is what I want you to do as well. So I've got a little time now before the break comes, and then we do a final section. What I wanted to show you is this. The QQQ had a left side, right side price time match on the weekly chart that said if it was going to break to the upside, it needed to get as close as possible last week to the 324 level in the weekly chart, in the Chapman Wave inside wedge target repellent line. It didn't do that for three weeks now. It's just, well, actually for four weeks, it's just been stuck underneath, like, I'd say in the below 320, below 323. It's just been stuck there. And this is saying to me, yes, we might get distribution if there is a sudden plunge. This week, it needs to be this week by Wednesday, Thursday, and a close by the end of the week, underneath the low of the 12th of April, which was 312, 3, 
312.57. If there was a tense under that, then you are in a digestive phase and that could last a little longer. You might use more time than twice. You've got a lot of support in the 3, 10 to 305 area. But if, for what, you never know what the reason is. Maybe it's earnings coming out. But if for any reason there's a spike in the QQQ into the 325 area, 323 to 325, that gets us closer to the price. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Uh, yeah, just I had a question about a five hour chart on crude oil. I don't uh, I have a, I don't have a five hour. I have the 120, I have a two hour, and that's really not I mean two the difference between a two hour and a five hour is huge. So, but let me just show you this something that you might be interested in. The question really was, was it a sideways trading band? So, yeah, we got pretty much the same chart. So you see this rectangle formation here. The longer the rectangle takes, the greater the chances are that it'll make low lows. It'll try to take out a base of support, and that base of support would be in crude oil, 83.20. Well, the low today so far is 81.35. Uh, wait, am I talking the right thing? Apples to apple, 83.20, is that the low? 83, oh, wait a minute. Uh, 81.70, so that's quite a bit low. I, it doesn't look like it to me. It looks like something's wrong. Yes, the rectangle formation. So when I, I usually look at the rectangle formation. We saw one earlier on today, 
Uh, let's see if I can find it. There it is. Here's your rectangle formation in the one-minute chart. The longer it goes without breaking out to the upside, especially if you can get to a D, when it takes out the midpoint of the rectangle, it probably can go lower, which it did, and then it tries to go back into the rectangle. If it fails to break that midpoint, I'll just do this quickly. The midpoint right there of the crude oil, this is a one-minute chart, sorry, this is a one-minute chart on the E-mini. If it fails to take out that midpoint of the rectangle, long, uh, uh, narrow rectangle, there's a chance it's going to make an H pattern and take out the low. So the E-mini now is down six. So if you look at the crude oil uh, at CL, it's got the same principle that I'm looking at. Oh, there was, where's that 120 minutes? Oh, it's there. 120 minute chart. It says if it, if it can't break above 83, uh, 82, 35 in the next, I'd say, hour, but it says takes out the low of the day, which is 80, 81, 35, then I would have a target of the 80.30 area or even 80 later on today. Uh, have a great day. Stay tuned for Steve Rose. Check out my opening call. Yes, we do have a stock that's related to natural gas that's been quite nice in right now.